Hey, welcome to the last benchmark of learning for the Pangea project. Today we're going to start by talking about one of the most important pieces of modern evidence that supported Alfred Wegener's idea of continental drift. But unfortunately, Alfred Wegener didn't know about this modern evidence at the time he proposed his idea. So recall that at the end of this project, you will be writing a letter discussing things that you know as a future scientist that could have helped Alfred Wegener. In benchmark two, we talked about convection currents and we talked about possibly um, having a mechanism for moving the crust around from pushing and pulling of the plates. So today's lesson is all about the theory of seafloor spreading, <clears throat> which didn't come around until the 1960s. It too had some evidence that was widely accepted. We're gonna talk a little bit about those pieces of evidence that supported the idea that the sea floors were actually spreading apart and getting wider. So remember Alfred Wegener, poor Alfred Wegener, um, no one believed his theory. He had great evidence. He had fossils, climate, and landform, but he wasn't able to give evidence for why the continents moved apart. And one of the big pieces of his theory was that Africa and South America had once been together. So in the 1960s, um, scientists invented sonar, which basically is just bouncing sound waves off of the surface. In this case, it was the bottom of the ocean. And they mapped the ocean floor. And a lot of this technology came about due to um, needs during the Great World War. And People really up until then thought that the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean were just vast wastelands of like nothingness, flat, um, almost like an underwater desert, just flat for miles and miles and miles. And what they found as they were mapping the ocean floor was that there was a huge mountain range right in the middle of the Atlantic. And they found this first later in other oceans and no one expected to find a mountain range at the bottom of the Atlantic. In fact, this mountain range at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean was bigger than some mountain ranges that occur on Earth. So the scientist that proposed the theory of seafloor spreading was named Harry Hess, and he also had three pieces of evidence to support the theory that the seafloor was spreading. Now, you might be thinking, okay, wait a second. There's mountains at the bottom. Wouldn't that mean that the seafloor was crunching up and pushing together? Just hang on, we'll explain. But if Alfred Wegener had known that the Atlantic Ocean had mountains down the middle and was in fact splitting apart, that would have been great evidence to add to his theory that South America and Africa had once been together. So I'll get back to this slide. I'm actually going to attach a PDF for you guys to see some of the pictures that are in your book. They're actually really good. Um, I'll go ahead and go through the evidence with you, though, in this video lesson. So one of the things that they found um, after scanning the ocean floor and drilling for samples is that right along this ridge, and they actually call this underwater um, mountain range the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Okay, so this is the, the place where the crust is pulling apart. They actually found that when they took rock samples from the area where the ridge begun out further, they actually found a bunch of really crazy things in the rock. Um, first of all, they used radioactive dating to figure out how old the rock was. The rock samples taken near the ridge were younger than the rock cycle uh, samples farther away. And so what that told them is that this is constantly pushing magma or molten material up, and either side is constantly being pushed out and away. So it makes sense that older rock is over here and newer rock is over here. Another thing that they noticed at the bottom of the ocean is that the rock samples taken had some pretty odd magnetic signature. So a lot of the rock um, in the ocean floor is basalt, and basalt has a whole bunch of iron in it. And they found that the iron molecules 
had a certain arrangement that kind of matched the Earth's magnetic field. And we now know that the Earth's magnetic field reverses, so the North Pole actually becomes the South Pole and vice versa, every 20 to 25,000 years. And there was a perfect record of Earth's magnetic reversals in the rock samples, which was pretty cool. Um, so they have samples of rock that are young, samples of rock that are old, and then almost like a timeline of data showing that this has been happening for millions of years. And they could basically calculate how long it would take for Africa and South America to be together and how long it took for them to split. So there's some pictures of some core samples that they've taken from the bottom of the ocean. Um, let's see if I have some pictures. <clears throat> Don't think I do. So another thing that they saw, and you'll see pictures that I link in the book, when they dove down to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, they actually found um, really cool rock formations. So as molten material comes up, it's immediately in contact with water. And so it cools very, very rapidly. And these rocks that are along the ridge, they look like someone squeezed toothpaste out of a tube, but it's rock. And it's actually from the magma um, cooling almost immediately on contact. So here's what you're gonna do for this first lesson. Um, in addition to me talking through these slides, you're really going to need to take a look at the PDF of the book pages that I've attached. So this is kind of like a CER activity. You can see there's some page numbers here on top for you to go back and look at. Um, what we're basically going through is Harry Hess's claim that the sea floor was spreading apart so that the mid-atlantic ridge was actually making the atlantic ocean bigger all right so you're going to write that as the claim and then you're going to use this video and um the book pages to describe the evidence that harry has had so we talked about there being molten material at the bottom okay we talked about the magnetic stripes and then we talked about the different drilling samples showing us the age of rocks close to the ridge and far away. Okay, so you're going to just basically take detailed notes and write it as a claim and evidence. And then in this gray box at the bottom, tell me how this information in your own words could help Alfred Wegener to prove his theory of continental drift. So I'm going to show you an echo where you're going to turn this in. This is a copy and paste. It's called Benchmark 3, Lesson 1, SFS is Seafloor Spreading Evidence Activity. And that's going to be for 10 agency points. Okay. Um, I'll be back tomorrow to talk to you a little bit more about plate tectonics. And that theory as well. That's another piece of modern evidence that Alfred Wegener would have liked to have. See you then.